For my first wide receiver, I figured where better to start than Jamar Chase, the wide receiver out of LSU, who, you know, is an interesting prospect, right? If you could turn back time, uh, you know, 12, 13, 14 months ago in the lead up to last draft season, you know, we were looking at perhaps one of the best and most stacked wide receiver classes that we've seen in quite some time. You know, we're talking Jerry Judy, CD Lamb, Henry Ruggs, Justin Jefferson, Brandon Ayuk, Denzel Mims, Michael Pittman, Chase Claypool, Jalen Rieger, right? The list goes on and on and on. T Higgins, just by example. The reason a lot of people didn't want to pick a receiver last year, at least from a fan perspective, was, yeah, well, none of them are as good as Jamar Chase, right? That was kind of a common argument uh, last season. So I was incredibly excited to dig in and see just how good Chase was, not only compared to those guys, but compared to the rest of his class this year. And as we kind of get into the background, the statistical production, the pro day measurables, um, there's a lot of moving parts here with Jamar, right? Um, first and foremost, what you're going to see if you look at this, a small sample size, right? Really only had one highly productive season. But on, on, the, on the contrary, that one season is about as productive as it gets. 1,700 yards, 20 touchdowns, does not get much better than that. But then there's the question of the opt-out, right? You know, what has he been doing since we last saw him in you know January of 2020 in the national championship game, what has he been doing since, right? Has he trended up? Has he trended down? Uh, has he been refining his skills and becoming an even better prospect, which is scary to think about off that 2019 season? Or has he been uh, trying to kind of take advantage of the situation and, hey, I'll get drafted after only playing two years, really only one highly productive one, right? Um, there's sort of an interesting dynamic there that uh, I don't think that we can have the answer to until we see him in training camp and into the preseason and regular season, right? Um, we're not going to know which way he trended, but it's certainly a discussion that needs to be had nonetheless with these opt-outs because there is an inherent risk of, of drafting somebody who hasn't played real football uh, in essentially a year. Otherwise, on a more positive note, you know, one thing we have seen him do in the past year was his pro day and uh, certainly impressed there. We're talking uh, a 41 inch vertical, which is NBA like we're talking an 11 foot broad jump, a 438 40 yard dash, as well as a 398 shuttle and a seven flat three cone. And that's just a freak, right? You know, that that's the only way I can put those numbers and wrap them up with a bow on it, right? He's just a freak. I also feel like we have to bring up uh, the questions of his supporting cast, right? In 2019, that year that he had, he was on a historic LSU offense. By example, uh, though that team has went on to have had one number one overall pick in Joe Burrow, right? One first round receiver who, you know, Justin Jefferson obviously went on to have a phenomenal uh, and historic rookie season in Minnesota, as well as a first round running back as well, right? So um, a lot of talent was around him at LSU. So that begs the question, you know, football is a very interconnected game. Football is a game where, hey, if uh, if there's a great running back and teams have to stack the box, maybe you'll get some better looks as a wide receiver. If there's a great wide receiver opposite of you, maybe they can't double team you as much, let alone, you know, in Chase's case where there were two or three of them. You know, if you have a great quarterback who's hitting you every time you, you go open, who's uh, delivering the ball with great accuracy and, and, you know, really putting you in a great spot to succeed, um, could those stats have been artificially inflated, right? I personally don't really think so, in all honesty, but it's a question that has to be discussed, uh, especially when we only had one year. If we saw him with a, a second highly productive year in 2020, I don't think those questions would exist realistically, right? If he even had a 1,500-yard season, they wouldn't exist. But he watched the season from his couch just like you or I. So there's a lot of questions there, right? And how you handle those questions, luckily, uh, that's for the various teams to assess, right? For me, when I'm grading him, I'm just looking at the film. So as we kind of get into the grade, as you'll see, I watched just about as many, as many games as I could find on him uh, because I did want to see just exactly what we had here in Chase. And I think... Um, as kind of an overall picture, I think we just have a great player. At that point, then it just becomes the question of how great is he, right? Um, is he worthy of a top three pick, a top five pick, a top 10 pick? Is he in fact better than all those receivers that we saw last year? And is he even the best receiver in his class, right? So 82.5, you're going to see it. For those who know, you know, some of the other grades I had, you might think that's a little bit low, but we'll, we'll get into it here. So first and foremost, um, since he is the, really the first receiver I've done, I'll kind of explain the scale as I go. To me, the two primary things to being a receiver uh, are creating separation, right? And it can happen in really one of two ways. You can either do it by just being better athletically than the guy across from you, right? You could be faster, quicker, have better acceleration, by example, or you could be a guy like, say, Keenan Allen, right? Who he wins based on 
outsmarting you, right? He makes you think he's running something that he's not. So by example, if he's running an out route, he's going to do everything along that route stem and into that cut um, to make you think it's a slant and in a post, a streak, right? He's selling every route besides the out route. That's what makes some of those uh, elite route runners great. The Amari Cooper, Stefan Diggs, the uh, Keenan Allen, guys like that, maybe who don't have the absolute best athletic profile, but they're able to still somehow get open consistently. I think that uh, those are the two things I'm looking for in a receiver primarily. That's why you'll see that's 35 points out of 100. You could do one or the other, or you could you know, hopefully be a great mix of both. I would argue that Jamar is more so just the physical freak than the elite route runner, right? Um, I thought his route running was fine in terms of, you know, crisp. Every route, he looked pretty comfortable running, right? And, you know, there wasn't a lot of wasted movement in that regard. What I will say, though, is there also wasn't a lot of intricacies, right? There wasn't a lot of nuance in what he was doing. It was more so, hey, you want me to run a post? I'm going to run a post. And, you know, that, that is, that's good for what it is, and especially in that LSU offense. I think he got away with it a little bit more than he would have elsewhere, right? Because, um, you know, maybe you can't have that safety help for as long. Maybe you can't just flat double cover him. Uh, maybe you can't send eight guys on a blitz to get to the quarterback in a hurry because you have all those other weapons, right? So, so I think he sort of got away with some more basic, um, just straight vanilla routes, uh, whereas maybe elsewhere that wouldn't be the case. And I'm not sure at the next level that'll be the case. However, I still think he's going to win a lot of his reps just off his sheer athleticism alone, right? I mean, 14.25, it doesn't get much, in my opinion, uh, quicker and faster than a guy like that. And I think that there's going to be just multiple reps a game where he wins off that alone, right? Because if you're a cornerback and you're not guessing right, or you're not reacting almost instantaneously, he's going to beat you, right? And that's that's the value in a guy like Chase. In terms of his hands and just general consistency in that regard, um, really making the best of that separation, I feel like he did a very good job, right? Occasional drops here and there, which, uh, you know, I had to dock him a little bit for, but overall, generally very solid. I felt like in terms of his contested catchability, you know, those 50-50 balls, being a guy that was only six feet tall, he played significantly larger than his size suggests, right? Um, did a great job of high pointing the balls, bringing them down, ripping them away from defenders, right? Uh, sort of mean in that regard. And it worked, right? It, it worked certainly well. Um, just again, I think that's a slightly less sustainable strategy than just flat getting open, right? That's why I weigh contested catches less than I weigh your ability to just, you know, run crisp routes, fool guys with your routes, have a, a clean release, those sort of things. Just have that elite speed and quickness, right? I think contested catches should come third on that sort of hierarchy of what you're looking for. Although Jamar, he excels at it most certainly. Next up, tracking and body control. This is for me, his top attribute. Um, just his ability to contort his body and, and really just find the ball and high point the ball. Great job uh, in that regard, in my opinion. Again, played bigger than his size, but a lot of times somebody being bigger actually comes with worse body control, right? Because there's more to control. It's it's certainly more difficult for, say, Mike Evans to make some crazy toe-tap grab than it is, say, Tyler Lockett, right? Due to various centers of gravity. Well, he's sort of that great mix of both where he can go up and climb the ladder to grab the ball, but he also can come down and make sure he drags his feet inbounds. I saw a lot of uh, impressive stuff there in that regard uh, from my point of view, right? I think that that might be uh, what makes him and puts him over the top at the next level, just that sort of balance of both, right? Otherwise, Next up, in terms of his rack ability, right, just transitioning from receiver to runner and making plays on the ground, I felt like he was good, right? He was fast. That allowed him to pull away. He wasn't necessarily the most agile or elusive guy. That's why I docked him a couple points. Um, but if you're just giving him giving him space, he's going to be able to capitalize on it, no question. And, you know, he, he's pretty physical after the catch as well in that regard, right? He's not the easiest guy to bring down. Where some of the other guys that I give high marks to, you know, you could maybe bring them down if you get a hand on them. It's that part that's tough, right? With, with Chase, it's kind of the other side of things where physical, um, even through that contact. Next up, I would say his release was probably his weakest area, at least as a flat receiver. Um, you know, there were some plays, especially on routes where he was just trying to run underneath on, say, a drag or an in or, you know, sort of shallow routes like that. If teams were pulling up on him, uh, there, he was occasionally getting just pressed to death, right? And there, there seemed to be nothing that he could do in terms of with his hands, with his feet, anything. I think he could really benefit from getting with a great wide receiver coach at the next level who can who can help him vary up that release, right? And, you know, do different things with his feet and with his hands to, to hopefully uh, not 
not find as many issues as he did in college against press because he'll see it even more at the next level, right? Guys are even bigger, faster, stronger there. So if they see that, hey, if I get a hand on him, he can't do anything about it, then, you know, you, you might struggle with that a little bit. I think, you know, pair him with a, a veteran teammate, pair him with a good position coach, I think you can most certainly correct some of those issues. Next up in terms of blocking and physicality, uh, you know, the physicality portion of his play style is really really pulling up this grade because he does not deserve a three out of five in run blocking at all by any means. I would say that's closer to a one and a half, if anything. But um, just the way he plays the game elsewhere is is highly physical. So I gave him a three. Uh, I just wish he showed some interest in in helping his teammates out, right? And I get it, you know, wide receivers kind of considered, oh, the diva position, right? And, you know, a guy like Chase, 1,800 yards almost, 20 touchdowns, you know, kind of a I'm doing my job mentality. Like, that's fine. But at the same time, uh, it doesn't take very much technique to throw second and third level defenders off their path, right? If you hit an unsuspecting linebacker, if you're able to get underneath a, a defensive back and, and, you know, just cut off their angle a little bit, um, that can go a long way in adding an extra five, 10 yards to plays, if not even letting them go for touchdowns, right? So uh, for a guy like Chase to, um, you know, we see the four, three, nine speed when he's running a streak. Why is he, you know, why is he just lackadaisically, um, you know, kind of bumbling and stumbling off the line when it's a running play, right? Take that four, three speed and run at that safety, right? Run at that linebacker, run at that corner, um, show some sort of effort and willingness, um, I mean, like I said, it doesn't take the most talent. It just takes a sort of mentality. And he just didn't really have that. Uh, that's why I wouldn't expect him to develop it either. It, it just comes down to a want to and sort of a mental toughness thing. Are you going to stick your nose in there? And are you going to take that guy on or are you not, right? Because, yeah, you can take a bad angle and it looks like, oh, I just missed him. You know, you could you could whiff on a guy and, oh, he juked me out, right? Well, you could also channel all your other intangible qualities and go block that guy, right? And help out Clyde Edwards Hilaire, by example, or help out that next NFL running back. Or, you know, after a fellow wide receiver makes a catch, you have that crazy speed, go hit somebody, right? Uh, well, that's not really Chase's game. Okay, great. Three out of five because he is physical elsewhere, just not there. Otherwise, a 3.75 out of size. Like I said, uh, he plays bigger than he is. So maybe I gave him a little bit more than I should have being only six feet. And then athleticism, 4.75. I don't think anybody's going to have quarrels with that. So overall, 82.5. Put that on the big board. Add in the position premium, which uh, four wide receivers is 4%. So take 4% of Chase's 82.5 and reimburse it into himself. Comes out to an 85.80 overall. Well, that is so far my number five player obviously my number one receiver to this point one of one so will he stay there that is the question uh to be answered in subsequent videos right obviously there's a lot of other talented guys at the top of this class whether it's uh, Rashad Bateman Jalen Waddle Devonta Smith as well as you know other positions that I haven't done yet QB you know a lot of people think four or five QBs go in the top 10 uh, I'll be interested to get into them and see you know how do I compare them to a guy like Chase right you know because like I said uh, last year, people thought a year from now, he could be a top two, top three pick, right? Well, now, you know, if you could potentially get him at six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, um, you know, maybe there's some value to be had there. And maybe you slightly look at receivers a little bit differently than I do. Maybe you think they should be worth 5%. Maybe you think they're the second most valuable position only to quarterbacks, right? Obviously, then he could climb up your uh, big board in that way. But um, for me, I think right now he's my fifth highest guy. Very good player. I'll be interested to see where he goes. Because, you know, one thing that people don't talk about very often, and then I'll get out of here, but a lot of times at the top of the draft, right, you almost have to overcome the bad situation, right? That's the whole point of the draft is, you know, you pick towards the top because you had a trash team. Well, now a good player gets put in a trash team. So being a game that's so reliant upon uh, the guys next to you, it's almost tougher for a guy like Chase to succeed than it is, say, a guy like Justin Jefferson from last year, right? Um you know, you put Jefferson in with Dalvin Cook, uh, Adam Thielen, a good quarterback, and oh, everything's great, right? Historic season. Well, how will Chase be able to do if you put him on the Cincinnati Bengals, right? How will he do if you put him in Philadelphia, right? Just by example. Um, I don't know. And that's sort of the problem with drafting wide receivers this high is, you know, a lot of times you see them sort of fizzle out at the next level. But I feel like in large part, that's due to not their own traits, but the traits of the guys around them, right? And I think that if you put him in a scheme with any semblance of talent at all, uh, I think you're going to be looking at a, a very good player, potentially 
um, and likely a future pro bowler in that regard. I just hope he doesn't get stuck somewhere uh, in a really bad situation where he's unable to overcome it, right? Because I don't quite think he's that high, right? I don't think he's into the 90s. I don't think he's some necessarily automatic Hall of Fame type guy, right? I don't think he's quite that high to where, you know, Calvin Johnson goes and no matter who, John Kitten and Matt Stafford, whoever it is throwing the ball to him, he's going to overcome regardless. I don't quite think that highly of Chase, right? I still think he needs the right pieces in place. I just hope that he gets it and I hope that he succeeds at the next level. So with that being said, if you hope I succeed, make sure you guys not only leave a like on the video, make sure you leave a comment down below. Tell me what are your thoughts on Chase? Uh, maybe don't even compare him as much to the other receivers in this class because he is the first one on the big board. That's kind of irrelevant. But compare him to guys from last year, right? Where would he have stacked up then? Do you think he would have been the number one receiver? I know I think I would have, although you know, him and C.D. Lamb would have been pretty close, right? I would say C.D. was a little bit more nuanced and you know, offered a little bit more after the catch, whereas Jamar is a better athlete, yes, but I think that some of that nuance and, and sort of route running uh, intricacies are yet to come, and there is a chance that they don't come, right? That's why the grade's potentially a little bit lower than you might like, but you guys can most certainly disagree. I'd love to hear that in the comment section down below, but um, otherwise, with that being said, make sure you also subscribe, right? Because if you are interested in hearing uh, my grades on those various other linebackers, whether it is Smith, Bateman, Waddle, you know, even some of those other guys, I, you know, there's not a lot of time to the draft, but I'm going to try and pump out as many of these as I can. So make sure you're subscribed and getting those videos uh, to you on the daily. So with that being said, that's all I have for you guys today. I'm mic'd up and I'm mic'ing out. Peace guys.